Good evening. So good to see you all today. What a blessing to be together to worship our Lord. We welcome our guests and visitors. It's great to have you with us. Please know you can come anytime. And if you'd like to know more about our church and the Word of God that we teach, please be sure to get a hold of me. Our information is on the back side of the worship folder. This is a service that goes out online on the TV and on the radio. And so especially for those on the radio, I'm Pastor Timothy Miller. And I'll be conducting the service and preaching the sermon. And our organist for this evening is Mrs. Bethany Babinick. We also thank all of those that work so hard to make sure this service gets out beyond here. Today we have the theme, Hard Truth. In fact, that's our overall theme for this time period of our worship services, the hard truth. The hard truth that we're learning today is the first will be last, the last will be first. And as you hear the Word of God, take it home with you, apply it to your everyday lives, and also share it with one another and encourage each other with God's Word. Let's open our service. We'll be using the red hymnal all the way through for this service. The red hymnal number 235. Let's sing together, Praise the Almighty, my soul adore him.
please stand. The order of worship we're using is the common service found in the front of the red hymnal beginning on page 15. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you reveal your mighty power chiefly in showing mercy and kindness. Grant us the full measure of your grace that we may obtain your promises and become partakers of your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Our first lesson is taken from the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 66, beginning with verse 18. Remember that we're talking about the hard truth. Here it speaks of those who seem unlikely to enter into God's kingdom, yet they believe and are saved. And yet there are those that seem likely to enter, but they don't believe 
and are condemned. As for me, because of their works and their thoughts, the time is coming for me to gather people from all nations and all languages. They will come and they will see my glory. Then I will set up a sign among them, and I will send out survivors from among them to the nations, to Tarshish, Pol, and Lud, to those who are archers, to Tubal and Javan, to the distant coastlands, who have not heard my message and have not seen my glory. Then they will declare my glory among the nations. Then they will bring all your brothers from all the nations as an offering to the Lord. They will bring them on horses and chariots and wagons and mules and dromedaries to my holy mountain Jerusalem, says the Lord, in the same way that the people of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel to the Lord's house. Even from among these people I will take priests and Levites, says the Lord. For just as the new heavens and the new earth that I am making will remain standing before me, declares the Lord, in the same way your offspring and your name will stand. As often as one new moon follows another and one Sabbath follows another, all flesh will come to worship before me, says the Lord. They will go out and they will see the corpses of the ones who were rebelling against me, for their worm will not die and their fire will not be quenched and all flesh will be horrified by them. And this is the word of our Lord. We turn to the psalm of the day, which is Psalm 103. If you're using the red hymnal, you can find it in the front on page 105. Let's sing together Psalm 103.
The second lesson is taken from Hebrews chapter 12, beginning with verse 18. Without Jesus, the hard truth would be that we are all condemned eternally. Through Christ, however, our names are written in heaven. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched, and to burning fire, to darkness, to gloom, to a raging storm, to the sound of a trumpet, and to a voice that spoke. Those who heard the voice asked that not one more word be added because they could not endure what was commanded. Even if even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned. The sight was so terrifying that even Moses said, I am trembling with fear. Instead, you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem, to tens of thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven, to God, who is the judge of all, to the spirits of righteous people who have been made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new testament, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better message than the blood of Abel. And this is the word of our Lord, the verse of the day. Alleluia, Jesus replied, if anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Alleluia. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel of St. Luke, the 13th chapter, beginning with verse 22. This section also serves as the sermon text. Jesus went on his way from one town and village to another, teaching and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone said to him, Lord, are only a few going to be saved? He said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able. Once the master of the house gets up and shuts the door, you will begin to stand outside and knock on the door, saying, Lord, open for us. He will tell you in reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. And he will say, I don't know where you come from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown outside. People will come from east and west, from north and south, and will recline at the table in the kingdom of God. Note this, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Together we confess our faith in the one true God using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We ask that you would fill out one of those white attendance guest cards that you'll find right in front of you in the pew rack. Those worshiping online, you can use the website or the link that is provided or the QR code that is also provided or call into church. Submit the cards after the sermon as the offering baskets go around. The return cards help us to get to know our guests better, also to serve you better and to encourage others who need to hear about God's grace. We continue our worship as we sing the hymn of the day, hymn number 395, Seek Where You May to Find a Way. May our Lord God strengthen our faith through the Word of God so that we strive and struggle always to enter through the narrow door. Your friends, 
Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you need to tell someone the hard truth? The hard truth is difficult to give and it's difficult to receive. But you have to give it because you love the person, you care about the person, the person may be destroying their own lives and could bring about eternal destruction for themselves. And so you need to share with them the hard truth. Maybe it's a situation where a person is drinking and drinking and drinking. They're an alcoholic. They don't know it. They need to hear that they're an alcoholic and they need help. It's a hard truth. Maybe it's a drug addict. Maybe we're talking about a chronic liar or an habitual gossip. They need to hear the, the hard truth. You love them, you care about them, and you want them to come back rather than go down that dark path that they're on. We pastors, at times, we need to share the hard truth with people, with members of our congregation. Maybe they are caught up in an unrepentant sin. They're carrying on a sin, they're living in a sin, and there's no repentance, and they need to hear the hard truth. Repent. Come back to God. Hear His Word. Your pastors and elders, they make contacts with people that are neglecting the Word of God, the Gospel in Word and Sacrament. Do we do that because... We want to be mean to people? Absolutely not, because we love them. We care about them. We care for their souls. What God wants us to do, and sometimes people react negatively. Some get angry and mad and say, well, I don't have time for church. I got too many other things to do. Leave me alone. And you know, when that happens, our hearts just bleed and cry. Because we're going because we love the person. We're calling the person to repentance. But then our hearts rejoice when we share God's word, the hard truth with people, and they respond by saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to God and to you. I'm so sorry. I'm going to make an effort to go to church and hear the word of God. I'm not going to neglect the gospel and word and sacrament anymore. I'm going to hear that word regularly, and oh, that just lifts our hearts, and we, we have the wonderful opportunity to, to announce forgiveness to them and to ourselves. We don't come with self-righteous hearts or judging hearts. We come with love in our hearts to call those people to repentance, to do the same if they're caught up in an unrepentant sin. You know, that's what Jesus does here. He tells us to do that because he gives us a hard truth. This is the hard truth that Jesus gives us today. He tells us to strive to enter through the narrow door. It tells us in our text at the beginning that Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. And as he goes, he's sharing the gospel. Now think about where he's going. He's going to Jerusalem in order to die for the world, in order to die for you. How important is that? That makes the work of telling the hard truth to people all the more important. Jesus died for the forgiveness of sins. It's only through him that one has eternal life. How important is that? That's more important than anything. And we don't want to go against what God says, and so we listen to what he says, and he says, strive to enter through the narrow door. And while he was teaching and preaching and traveling, there was an individual who asked him this question. Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? As you study Jesus' answer, you realize that he really didn't answer the question. He directed the individual and his hearers and us today to our salvation. To think about our salvation through Jesus Christ. And that's what he wants us to do every day. And then 
to be always connected to the only way, that's Jesus. This is how he answered. He said, strive to enter through the narrow door because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able. Once the master of the house gets up and shuts the door, you will begin to stand outside and knock on the door saying, Lord, open up for us. He will tell you in reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence and you taught in our streets. And he will say, I don't know where you come from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown outside. Jesus was talking mostly to Jewish hearers, people of Israel. And many of them felt that they were saved. They had eternal life because... They had descended from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They were of the chosen people of God, after all. We have the bloodline. If anybody's getting into heaven, we are, because of who we are and where we come from. And some will say, as Jesus said, I was with you. I heard you teach. Why am I not getting in? Many of them thought that they were getting in for all kinds of reasons other than through Jesus and Jesus alone. And what Jesus is teaching here is that there's a narrow door, which means there's only one way to have eternal life. One way and one way only. And that's through Christ Jesus. All other ways are false. You can't get into heaven through any other way. It's only through Christ Jesus. He is the one way. Listen to Bible passages. They're all through Scripture. This one from John 14 where Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. He's the way. There is no other way, he says. Another passage also from John, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He is crossed over from death to life. It's another passage from John which emphasizes the need to hear the word of God. Those who are in Christ, those who believe in the Savior want to hear his word. They're not those that neglect the word of God and that give all kinds of excuses for not being at worship or hearing the word of God. We are to hear the word of God. It is our Lord God speaking to us like he's doing right now. In John 8 it says, He who belongs to God by faith hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. God wants us to hear his word just like you're doing right now. This is a blessing from God that you have faith and that your faith is alive listening to the word of God. Our sinful nature wants to come up with all kinds of excuses. And you know that we've heard them all. We've heard some who will say, well, I don't go to church at all, but you know, my parents and my grandparents, they all went to church on a regular basis. That should get me in. Or, you know, I'm on the books at St. John's. Or I went to school and or Sunday school. That's good enough, isn't it? Or I, I've given offerings, lots of offerings to church. That's good enough to get me in, isn't it? My heritage is going to get me in. You could... Go through all of these excuses and where are they found in God's word? Where are they given as reasons for having eternal life? No place. Nowhere. The word of God says it's only through Christ and faith in Christ Jesus. And faith is kept alive through the word of God. He who belongs to God hears what God says. 
And if they don't care about God's word, if they don't hear the word of God, faith will die. And they're outside of the kingdom of God. That's why we care so much. That's why we love so much. That's why we want to make those contacts to those people to call them to repentance. For again and again, you hear in the word of God, repent, repent for the kingdom of God is near. Listen to the powerful and blunt words that God gives to us here. Jesus speaks hard truth, hard to take. And he will say, I don't know where you come from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown out. To hear those words, I don't know you, to see the door locked and shut. What a disaster. But God is giving the hard truth here as he calls people to repentance. What he says here is far different than what the world believes. The world's lie is that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you hear the word of God. They don't call it the word, the Bible. Doesn't matter, because after all, everyone ends up in heaven. Is that what this is saying? Absolutely not. We have hard truth that's coming here. And it continues when it reminds us that the last will be first, and the first will be last, as it says here in our text. People will come from east and west, from north and south, and will recline at the table in the kingdom of God. And note this. Some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. Those who are unrepentant will hear the door shut and they will not be in. But, you know, added to that is a terrible thing. They will see others enter into the kingdom of God. The Jews Jesus went to first with the gospel with himself as the Savior, the good news of salvation. And many of them rejected him. But they thought for sure they have eternal life because how good they were and also who they descended from. But those that would think they'd be first in the kingdom will be last. And if they continue with an unrepentant heart, they won't get in at all. But then those were last, the unlikely individuals. Jesus said the gospel is going out to all nations. The Gentiles are to hear of the gospel of salvation through me. Unlikely individuals to some, and yet those who are last will be first. Jesus is speaking some hard truth here. He's talking to us as well as he's saying, don't take your faith for granted. Don't take the word of God for granted. Don't become apathetic in regard to your faith. Strive to enter through the narrow door. He's not saying here, he's not teaching here salvation by works. He's saying, hold on to Christ Jesus by faith at all costs. Don't let him go. Don't let anyone take him from you. Don't let anyone take the word of God from you. Don't let your sinful nature tempt you to stay away from the word of God. Strive to enter through that narrow door. And who is that narrow door? It's Christ Jesus. He's the narrow door. Enter through the narrow door. What's that door? Rather, Who is that door? That door is Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Together we sing, Create in me a clean heart, O God.
As Christ's love compels us and our faith is living and active, we cheerfully give our offerings to our Lord. As the baskets go around, be sure to place that attendance guest card in one of the baskets. When they are brought forward, we dedicate all the gifts to God, those given here, those given online, and those dropped off at the church office. Our hearts are moved by the love of God to give. We now sing the next hymn, hymn number 372, I Lay My Sins on Jesus. Recently, the Lord took home to heaven Marge Koloff and also Becky Fisher's dad, Paul Siegler. We pray for the families. Dear gracious Lord, we have heard the hard truth today as you have called us to repentance and a total dependency on Christ Jesus for our salvation. You have shared the hard truth with us that there is only one door into your kingdom and eternal life with you and that is through Christ and faith in Christ alone. Keep us from self-righteousness, unrepentant sin, and making excuses for neglecting your word. Thank you for the gift of our faith. Help us to never take it for granted, but to have it regularly strengthened and kept through the gospel in word and sacrament. Endow us richly with the Holy Spirit, and by his grace sustain our faith, dispelling our doubts and confusion, and keeping us faithful and true to your word. 
Direct our footsteps along the path of righteousness. Help us subdue our sinful flesh and prevent us from being dazzled by the attractions of this world. Restrain the devil and his wicked angels, lest they threaten our faith and strike terror in our hearts. Fill our hearts then with such gratitude for your salvation that we gladly set about to bring the light of the gospel to those who are without Christ and therefore without hope. Dear gracious Father, we thank you that in your fatherly love you gave your merciful guidance and constant blessing in body and soul throughout the life of Marge Koloff and Becky Fisher's dad, Paul Siegler. Let your holy word comfort the families and all those who grieve. Strengthen them with the assurance that in all things you are at work in truth and love. Teach us to number our days. Help us seek the things that are above, that we may at last appear before your presence in peace and joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Together we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our worship continues with the sacrament liturgy beginning on page 21 in the front of the hymnal. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who promised that wherever two or three come together in his name, there he is with them to shepherd his flock till he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
be seated. As we celebrate the Lord's Supper and members of our church and church body, the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod, come to Holy Communion, approach up the middle and return by the side aisle. When indicated, kneel or remain standing at the rail. Receive the wafer with an open hand and take the wine cup yourself from the tray. And if you prefer to be handed the wine cup, simply hold out your hand. Hold out your wafer hand up like stop if you want a gluten-free wafer available in a sleeve on the tray. And non-alcoholic white wine is also available in the middle of the cup tray. Cup receptacles are along the walls, and the common wine cup or chalice is provided as a choice. The general blessing will be given at the end. Come now, all things are ready.
Please stand. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace, your sins are forgiven. Amen. We respond as we sing the song of Simeon. Lord, now you let your servant depart in peace. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this Holy Supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated. Once again, so good to see all of you. It, it certainly is a a wondrous joy. I have a number of announcements. I'm going to make them quickly because we have all the details in the worship folder, but I would like to emphasize a few of them. On September 3rd at 9 o'clock, there's help needed to move the Ewerts into their new home, and you'll find details, like I said, in the bulletin. Ladies' Aid Kitchen Cleaning will be on Wednesday at 9.30 in the morning. There are still some openings for your three- and four-year-old preschool children in our school's preschool program. Voters' meeting, we will have a voters' meeting on Thursday at 6.30. It will be in the school cafeteria. Next week, a week from tomorrow, Sunday, August 28th at 9.30, we will have the installation of our new teachers. We have four new teachers. Notice we have baskets in order to show them that we care about them. We want to help uh, welcome them and provide for them. And so those baskets are like a pantry shower. We'd like to fill them up. And so if you have something at home you can bring in, bring it in next week uh, and uh, put it in the basket and we'll get it back to, we'll get it out to those four new teachers. Again, that's teacher installation next week week at the 930 service and right after that we're going to have a gathering over on the grass by the school for refreshments and welcoming those new teachers. Tomorrow Sunday is the last time to give to the seminary food pantry as it will be taken to the seminary on Monday. However, after that you'll be able to bring it in and set it in the hallway there, uh, but it'll be a little while before we deliver it again. So if you have anything, bring that in as well. I want you to keep in mind this date, September 11th. September 11th. That's when things change as far as our schedule from 9.30 to 10.30 service on Sunday and in between Bible study. You can look at what we'll be studying then and also on Wednesday. Sunday school will begin then too with youth Bible class. Reports for the annual report are due September 2nd, and this just came in. Heritage Homes is connected to our church through our synod. The Lutheran Home Association is an arm of our synod. They're going to have a Brat Fry open house on August 25th. That's coming up Thursday from 11 to 2. Good to see you. God bless you all. Thank you.